What should you do with your 401k when leaving your employer? And does the answer change depending on your age and how close you are to retirement? Well, here to talk with me about this is Dana Anspa from Sensible Money. Dana, welcome. Thanks, Bob. Always great to be here. It's always great to have you. So we're eager to have you walk us through what you consider to be the four questions that uh, workers need to answer before deciding what to do with their employ their old 401k. Yeah, absolutely. And I don't know if I'd frame it as questions or you know, four areas to consider, four areas to, to really look at. And some of them are widely talked about in the media and some are not. And so you know, the ones I want to cover are one, the timing, how old are you and, and what are some options that might be available to you that you aren't aware of? Two, investment choices, you know, pros and cons of choices inside and outside the 401k. Um, three, the administrative factors. And this is an area I don't hear it talked about much in the media. Of, and so I'll, I'll dive into what I really mean by that. And then, of course, we'll talk about fees and pricing, which that seems to be what everyone focuses on. And I think sometimes that focus gets misplaced. People are so focused on price, they forget about some of the other factors that can be really important, particularly as someone is nearing that decumulation phase or getting ready to retire. So younger workers, some of the factors are less important, but as people get into that 55 plus age range, some of these factors become even, even more important. Yeah. So what do folks need to know about the timing aspect? So when I talk about timing, there are some unique distribution options available if you were to leave your employer after you attained the age of 55, but before the age of 59 and a half, or for certain types of public service workers, uh, that age is actually as, as young as 50. So if you were to leave um, service after age 50, but before 59 and a half, well, normally if you withdraw money in that time frame, you're going to pay a 10% early withdrawal penalty tax in addition to any income taxes on the distribution. But if you leave the funds in the plan, then that 10% early withdrawal penalty tax doesn't apply. So it preserves liquidity. And so for people who come into our planning process, they might have just left their employer at age 56. We might say, you know, you might want to leave all or a portion of your money in the plan so that you can preserve access if you need it and avoid that 10% penalty tax. Now, if someone has a ton of assets outside the plan, then maybe that's not a factor. But if they don't, I, I think that is a, a key factor to consider in the timing. If you're over 59 and a half, then timing is less of a concern. The other issue on timing would be if you were going to go to work for a new employer uh, and want to roll your money into a new plan, new plans, will often, not always, but often offer 401k plan loans. Those aren't available within an IRA. And so if preserving that type of liquidity was important to you, that could be could fall under a timing factor also. But really, I think of that, that age 55 special rule or age 50, if you're a public service worker, preserving access is, is pretty key. That's the main thing to consider for timing. All right. And then uh, the other area you mentioned is investment choices. And those obviously differ from the, your employer's plan to if you plan to roll it over or roll it over into a new employer's plan, you're going to have to almost start all over again. You are. So if you're going to roll your 401k to an IRA, usually at a brokerage firm, let's say Fidelity or Vanguard or Schwab, you have a world full of choices at these brokerage firms. You can invest in stocks, bonds, almost any type of mutual fund. Usually within your plan, you have a, a limited set of choices, which makes sense. People get overwhelmed by too many choices. So I, I completely agree with, with limiting the set of choices in the plan. But there are sometimes some unique options within a 401k plan. One that we see sometimes is something called a stable value fund. Another one that we see is sometimes called a fixed rate fund or a, a GIC, guaranteed income contract or guaranteed investment contract that will pay a, a fixed interest rate. And often these interest rates are higher than any kind of guaranteed rate you could find outside of the plan. And so sometimes when we see people that have that particular investment option, we will say, well, we're going to leave all or a portion of your money in the plan and use that as your fixed income or bond bucket because it's paying a higher interest rate. And maybe some of the, the balance gets rolled out of the plan to access other options, but often we want to preserve access to that type of 
special special fixed interest rate option. That would be a case where we would leave some money in the plan. Other cases we see are where there are not unique choices on the equity side. There isn't you know, small cap value or emerging markets or international small cap, some asset classes that could add value for the long-term bucket, your money that's invested for a 10-year time horizon or more. And so if you don't have those options, it does limit uh, the ability to, to build a very diversified portfolio. You can't invest in CDs or individual bonds within a 401k plan. So if you don't have a stable value or a guaranteed income contract type option, you know, then maybe you do want to roll the money out to build what we call an income ladder or your paycheck replacement portion of, of your portfolio. The other thing we see is within a 401k plan, there's often one-click options to rebalance investments, which is really attractive if uh, you know you, you don't know what else to do, but it doesn't coordinate with all of the accounts outside of that 401k plan. And although some plans offer great managed account options, you can pay a fee and they will balance the investments for you. Again, it doesn't coordinate with outside investments. And as you get closer to that decumulation phase, you need all of your accounts to be working together toward a common goal. And that can be more difficult when this one's managed in isolation and this one's managed in isolation and this one's managed in isolation. And so for all of those reasons, when you, you weigh out the, all of those factors, we often do recommend the rollover to the 401k because it gives you the flexibility to build a portfolio, coordinate with outside choices. And we think that over time, that adds a tremendous amount of value. Yeah. Uh, what about employer stock uh, in dealing with that? Employer stock is a great one. So when you have employer stock in your 401k plan, you're eligible to do something called net unrealized appreciation. It's a certain type of distribution option where the employer stock can be distributed from the plan. You only pay taxes on the basis. You pay ordinary income tax rates, and then the difference can qualify for capital gains tax rates. You and I did a whole nother video on that, which uh, we would highly recommend people watch if they have employer stock, but it gives you some unique options. And in that case, you actually have to roll the entire 401k balance out to qualify for, for this tax treatment within the the same calendar year, and there's certain times when you are eligible to do this. But that is another reason where we would often recommend that people um, roll out of the plan is, is to qualify for that special tax treatment. Mm. So the third area is um, one that you think the press and others don't pay much attention to, which is administration. Yeah. And what I mean by administration is when you go to, well, there's a lot of things I mean, but when you go to withdraw money, there are you know, certain ways you can do it. Some people will take a lump sum once a year and then budget for, for the year. But most retirees we find will resonate with what I call a paycheck replacement process. So we will set up direct distributions on a monthly or sometimes even biweekly basis to replicate someone's paycheck because that's how we're all used to paying our bills and, and managing our, our monthly and then periodic expenses, things that, that maybe only come up once or twice a year. Well, some 401k plans don't allow you to do that. Some of them limit how often you can take distributions. Some of them will not set up direct deposits. Sometimes it has to do with it maybe a smaller plan administrator and they don't want to have someone's banking information on file. So there can be just cybersecurity reasons they don't want that information. And when you actually go to withdraw investments, every time you take a withdrawal, you're having to decide what to sell. We are big fans of something called a bucket strategy. So you, you withdraw what you need in the near term out of the safe bucket, or PIMCO calls it the paycheck replacement bucket. I love that term. And then you have your, your longer term bucket. Well, most 401k plans, you cannot do that. When you take a withdrawal, it has to come in a pro rata fashion. Pro rata means you know, proportionately across all of the investment choices that you have. So again, it limits the way you can withdraw money. And I find those kinds of limitations when you look at 20 years worth of withdrawals or 30 years in retirement could have a big impact on how long the money lasts and, and what the outcome is. 401k plans also can go through blackout periods. So your employer decides, you know, they don't want XYZ company to administer the plan or the investments. And so they're changing to, you know, ABC company. Well, most of us have experienced the blackout period it might be 30 days, sometimes 60 days where you can't access your money. 
that can be problematic when you're in retirement. In addition, when that happens, you have to restructure your investments, you'd have to reset up your distributions, and then things change throughout life, throughout retirement, just as they do normal life. You need to change your beneficiaries, your address, your bank account. It just becomes one more place where you have to do all of those things. And then when you're 72, you have to take required minimum distributions. And if you have a 401k plan, that account can't be consolidated with other IRAs. It has to have its own distribution. So it becomes one more place, again, where you have to do that and set up tax withholding. And boy, that's a lot. I just rattled off. But <laughs> this administration side is something we deal with every day because we are making sure all of this works for our clients. And so I see it firsthand. And you and I were talking earlier, I described it as if something's easy, right? Eating healthy, we will buy prepackaged health food because it, it makes it easy to eat healthy. Well, in retirement, if it's easy, it's a lot you know, more manageable to set up a system that works, to follow it, to make sure everything's set up right. But all of these administrative factors can make things more difficult when you're in retirement, particularly as you get older and cognitive decline can set in and navigating all of the technology can become harder. And so I, all of those factors to me weigh pretty heavily toward rolling to an IRA and making it easy on yourself to, to make sure all of these things are in order and stay in order. Yeah. Um, then what about creditor protection? I, I know there's been a lot of talk about the difference between creditor protection with 401ks versus IRAs. 